Hello, and welcome to this week's News Bulletin Roundup at the International News Channel. I'm Ava Blackwell. Let's take a look at the headlines. Well, Canadians are projected to have another minority Liberal government as polls closed Monday night. Police are looking into a maskless PPC event in Saskatoon. Orders in Afghanistan telling girls not to go to school are met with online protests. Australia defends its decision to swap their multi-billion dollar submarine purchase. A woman is found on a Croatian shore, unsure of who she is and how she got there. Police continue their search for Brian Laundrie as thousands mourn Gabby Petito. Well, after a summer of campaigning, party leaders wait in anticipation for the final results of this year's federal election. With the majority of votes counted, it appears that Canadians are going to continue with their minority Liberal government. As of noon on Tuesday, September 21st, Liberals have 32.2% of the popular vote, Conservatives 34%, Bloc Québécois 7.8%, NDP 17.7%, PPC 5.1% and Green 2.3%. However, Liberals have secured the most seats at 158 or 46.8%. I am disappointed. Uh, it is hard to lose. No one likes to lose. It is an ideological revolution that we are starting now. I will be ready to lead Canada's Conservatives to victory. Thank you, Canada. Let's get to work. New Democrats will fight to take care of all Canadians so that together we all rise. You are sending us back to work with a clear mandate to get Canada through this pandemic. Let us feel the warmth of a new dawn, and above all, let us seize the promise of a brand new day. During this election, where one party leader is being criticized for a maskless event for their party. Over Saskatoon, more than 100 PPC supporters stayed in a Saskatoon Inn to watch the federal election results come in. Moreover, to hear from PPC leader Maxine Bernier. Most of these people were maskless and indoors, even though a public health order has been in place since September 17th, which states that masks are mandatory in all indoor public places within Saskatchewan. Currently, in Saskatoon, is the hottest spot for COVID cases within the province. News from Afghanistan. The Taliban has disallowed female middle and high school students from returning to their education for now. Moreover, the interim mayor of Kabul, Hamdullah Namoni, has told female city employees to stay at home unless their work cannot be performed by a male. In response, young Afghan girls and boys have taken to social media, with their faces blurred and holding signs to protest this edict on education. These signs include questions like, why can't we attend school, as well as appeals to the equality of brothers and sisters, saying that males won't go without their sisters. Turning now to AUKUS Australia defends its decision to swap their multi-billion dollar submarine purchase for the new security pact with the UK and US. In response to AUKUS, France has recalled their ambassadors from both the US and Australia in an effort to convey their condemnation. The previous deal between Australia and France was worth $37 billion. Moreover, France has stated that they were informed of this pact only hours before it was released to the public. Meanwhile, Australia's Prime Minister Scott Morrison has stated that France should have known that Australia had hesitancy towards this deal, since the submarines were to be sold by France, were not going to be able to meet the function which they were acquired for. Over in Croatia, a woman who appears to be in her 60s, who is 5 feet 4 inches tall, who has blonde hair and speaks English, was found on a northern Croatia island on September 12th. The woman has no idea who she is or how she got there. She was found on this island, which is only connected to the mainland via a toll bridge. The couple who had found her state that there is no way she could have gotten there alone. Authorities guess that she must have spent several nights in the area. She was weak and unable to drink water without the help of someone else. As of now, she is being treated in a mainland Croatian hospital. Finally, in tragic events, what appears to be Gabby Petito's body was found in Wyoming National Park. Thousands of individuals have been watching the case closely, trying to piece together the final moments of the 22-year-old's life. Petito and fiancé Brian Laundry were touring the country, living together in a van. Police footage shows a domestic dispute between the two weeks prior to September 1st when Laundrie pulled into their driveway alone. 
Since then, Laundrie himself has been missing, and the FBI have been searching for him to get a sense of what happened to the young woman. That's all for today. You're watching the International News Channel. I'm Ava Blackwell. Remember to subscribe, like, and turn on the bell notifications so that you don't miss out on any of our latest posts. Thank you.